As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. prosperity within thy palaces for my brethren and companions sake I will now say peace be within thee because of the house of the Lord my God I will seek thy good only thou strong and very courageous that thou may have served to according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee Come on, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I am the vine, yes. and ye are the branches. Amen. He that abideth in me, and I in him, yes. the same bringeth forth much fruit. much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. I, I do all things through Christ which is in the Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yes. Lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go straight into our offering. Hallelujah. So that we can get to this word. Amen. I'm excited about this word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of the directions of the ushers. What time is it, Serenity? Offering time. Bible study on Wednesday was your top Bible study. 
and we could feel the power of the Holy Spirit. So I know that she has been supping in this word, and I'm excited. And my heart is open to receive what thus saith the Lord. Amen. 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 So praise team, come on up. And then after that, none other will tell Lashana Williams, come on up and bring forth the word of God. Amen. Amen.
because the winds were against us. After sailing through the open sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we reached Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. Sailing slowly for many days with difficulty, we arrived at Sanitas. Since the wind did not allow us to approach it, we sailed along the south side of Crete off Salmon. With, with still more difficulty, we sailed along the coast and came to a place called Fair Havens near the city of Lycia. You may be seated. I'm not going to read it all the way through. Now, many may know the story. This is Paul's um, shipwreck story. Many of us um, may be shipwrecked today, or we may have been shipwrecked, mm. or maybe just a little broken. Mm. Amen? Amen? It's all right to be honest with yourself and then with God. Amen. Come on now. And so this is actually, and I really, you know, didn't catch this before. This was the fourth, if I counted it right, the fourth shipwreck. We're going to get to that in a little bit. And um, he had some troubles, just like we all do, in this this um, thing called life. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was the attitude in which he approached the struggles and the trials that he encountered in his time that we need to take note of. Right. Now, for those that were on Bible study on Wednesday, I was talking about some things, some hard places, and needing to make some decisions about where I was at that time. And I think we all get to that place. We all have those days or those weeks or those months, sometimes it's even years, right. that we face a hardship right. and we don't know whether we're coming or going. Right. Come on, Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 But as the body of believers, we are to expect these things. Right. Amen. They don't feel good. Amen. We don't have to like it. Come. But in the end, we're the better for it. Amen. Amen. So let's make it. We can make it. Yeah. On broken pieces of broken, we can make it. Yeah, yeah. Following his last great missionary journey, the Apostle Paul returned to Jerusalem. There he was arrested and sent to the Roman provincial capital of Caesarea, where he was where he is tried and eventually transported as a prisoner to Rome to appear, to appear before the imperial court. Now there's a scripture within 27 that says he had to get to where he was going. Yeah, My yeah. God. Yeah. He had to get to Rome. You gotta make it. You gotta make it. Yeah, yeah, and you can. Yeah. 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 Paul and some other prisoners are handed over to a centurion boarding a ship. Paul is accompanied by two command companions, Aristarchus and the author of Acts, which is Luke. Paul's ship was a was a public conveyance, and other passages were aboard, which is probably how come Luke was able to and his, well, his companions were able to get on the ship with him. Verses 3 through 5, leaving Caesarea, the ship arrives in Sidon the next day. After leaving Sidon, the prevailing winds forced them to pass east of and north of Cyprus on their way to Myra. Right. Verse 9, the prevailing wind at that time of the year was from the west. And it reveals that it was early fall. Say it's fall, y'all. It's fall, y'all. Given the prevailing west wind, they would have had to pass north on the island to continue west. And the only reason I'm giving you these details is because it matters to the text. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. The distance was 67 miles over land, and they were trying to outrun the storm. Mm -hmm. Now, don't judge me, but I, when I was typing this up, I thought about the Christopher Cross song, I Got to Ride Like the Wind. Yeah. yeah, and it's been written in my head off. I've been up for a long time. Yeah. Acts twenty seven and six. They ported at Myra, and the centurion transfers Paul and the other prisoners to an Alexandrian grain ship bound for Rome. A ship sailing for Rome would have had to sail north to Myra, and at this time of the year, because it was impossible to sail directly northwest to Rome because of the winds from. The West. Mm. 
So the Egyptian um, grain ship left port. And they, it says, finally, and they stand off the town of Sinaitis, having reached that point only with greatest difficulty. Mm. So they had some place they were trying to go. Uh -huh. I'm going to make a point before I get to the points and I'm outline on this paper. They had some place they were trying to go or that they purposed to go, but they were having some difficulty get, getting there. Mm -hmm. Anybody have some difficulty? Come on. Have had some difficulty or having some difficulty? Well, uh, I believe it's the same writer that says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So, whatever we do, we have to press. Amen. Amen. Because the wind was wind is, was against them, the ship's captain decides to sail southwest in order to pass to the south of the island of Crete after passing Cape Salomon on the eastern end of the island. They make their way along the southern coast. It is with difficulty they reach the harbor called Fair Havens. I thought that was maybe a play on words, but it wasn't really. It was just where they went. Fair Havens. Or in my mind, when I read it, I thought, fair heavens. Hmm. <laughs> as, we, as they traveled along with this difficulty, fair havens wasn't necessarily that fair. <laughs> the distance from Myra, Myra to Sidus was 130 land miles. The ship could have covered that distance in a single day with a favoring wind. And Luke says that it took several days. The distance from Myra to Sinindus was 130 land miles. Does that remind you of anybody? Mm -hmm. Anybody else in the Bible that the Bible talks about? A loving day journey took how many? How many years? Mm -hmm. Amen. The children of Israel wandering around. Yeah. Them, yeah. Out. them children of Israel ro roaming around in the desert yeah. for yeah. up to yeah. years, and it should have only taken 11 days. Wow. Amen. Because they couldn't go any farther west at Salinas, the ship turned to the southwest to get behind Crete. Anybody running? <laughs> <laughs> running from your troubles and your hardships. Yes. Running, actually, not from the troubles or the hardship, but you just running from God because you don't want to do what he called you to do and you don't feel like you're in a position to be able to do what he called you to do you don't feel like you're qualified to do what he called you to do what he called you to do he who he who he calls he qualifies amen the wind had shifted a westerly wind would have made it impossible for them to sail to the southwest to get <laughs> behind Crete. Does anybody feel like God do them like that? You're going to run and hide um, with Jonah. Jonah. Because <laughs> you refuse to do what God called you to do. I don't, he didn't think that the people God had sent him, hear me, he didn't think the people God sent him to minister to was worthy of receiving the word of the Lord. Right. He didn't think they should be saved. So how many times do we pass people on the streets and we feel like, oh, they don't want to hear the word of the Lord. They don't want to hear a word of salvation because we have prejudged them based on either some their outward appearance, um, an idea, ideology we have in our heads, or whatever the case may be. Right. Amen. 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 So, mm. had they turned the Turn the ship to the southwest at any point between Myra and Sinindus, they would have never reached Crete. Mm. So, in all our running, we don't outrun God. Amen. That, that place of refuge we think is refuge, we never reach. Never because reach. it's hard to kick against the prick. Right. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. You either go willingly. <laughs> kicking and screaming as they say amen the islands in their path would have prevented them from being able to turn the ship the ship could only reach Crete by turning southwest at Sinindus <laughs> 
A decent wind from the south began to blow. This is verses 9 through 12. And the captain decided to make for, be for a better harbor at Phoenix on the western end of Crete. Because of the lateness of the season, his decision was controversial. During the winter, no ships sailed on the Mediterranean. As Luke records, they could either winter at Fair Havens, stay there until it was better weather, or use a temporary use a temporary southern wind to make for Phoenix. The argument against sailing for Phoenix was the lateness of the season, mm, 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 with the real possibility of a sudden bad wind that could wreck the ship. Bad wind blowing, y'all. So sometimes I just had this thought when I said, mm, mm, mm. the thought was sometimes we think we're too late in our season. Mm -hmm. I'm too old. Jesus. God can't use me. Mm -hmm. My time has passed. Uh -huh. Come on, now. Amen. 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 Check your thinking, thinking. <laughs> and I had to eat it first. Yeah. Even while I'm getting these downloads um, right now. <laughs> My first point, yeah. storms will come. 2 Corinthians 11 and 25, Paul says, Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole day and night adrift at sea. Apparently, people on a mission from God are not exempt from trials and suffering. Right. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. We are not exempt. Not exempt. In right. fact, we are probably the more likely yeah, to, to have these trials and suffering. Amen. 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 Because we we have an appointed place and a, to be. Yeah. Because when I placed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Yes. That's and we right. have an appointed time to get there. Now we can delay the inevitable uh -huh. right. by being disobedient. Uh huh. You know, but that has a domino effect. Your you know, like if, say for instance, if God said be at 611 East Adams Street at 9 o'clock on Monday morning, the 13th, and we decide to show up there on the 14th at 10 o'clock, there is a domino effect because we are a day late and, as they say, a dollar short. Mm -hmm. So it, our, for every action, there is a repercussion. It can be good or bad. Good or bad. But there is always, there's reward and consequences. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it just behooves us to do what the Lord said, when he said for us do to it do right. it. And do it right the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and if we, we don't feel like we can, we can just, we can always ask for some assistance. Help is the yeah. shortest prayer. Help. There it is. Help. Amen. 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 Yeah. The storms will come. Yeah. Yeah. So now we can talk about the, the gale winds. Acts 27, 13 through 20. In verse 13, Luke says that after leaving Fair Havens, the ship sailed close to the shore. The ship really didn't have any choice but to sail close to the shore. They didn't do it on purpose, but it was because of the winds. Yes. Sorry. Because ancient ships could not, you know, maneuver close like that. They weren't built for that. They would have, and they had to struggle from being blown against the coast until finally, well, they did struggle until they rounded the cape at Matala. Mm -hmm. I'm about halfway done. <laughs> from Cape Matala, it was 34 miles to Phoenix. With the southern wind now favoring their course, they should have reached the harbor in a few hours. Instead, there was a violent change in the weather. Hmm. A gale suddenly roared down on them from Crete's 7,000 foot tall mountains. Mama Jo, I've come to a point where I thought about you. Forcing them to turn and run behind the wind. Forcing them to turn and run behind the wind. They were chasing the wind. The sailors called this wind your quilla which is a slang compound of Greek and Latin. The Greek Eurus, E-R-U-S, means east, and the Latin Aquila means north, which translates as northeastern, a strong winter wind. Mm. Y'all know those, yes. those 
cooks, Mama Jo May. And the name she has gone. I say, go ahead, Mama Jo. <laughs> I like that. They ran before the wind. So now they they trying to outrun the wind. They ran before the wind to avoid capsizing and found temporary shelter behind the small island of Cotta. Here they had a choice to make. For a sailing vessel to drift in a gale without capsizing, it must either face toward the wind or away from it. Since Luke records that they wrecked on the island of Malta to the northwest, we know that they faced the ship into the wind. Do we have the courage to just stand in the midst of the storm, in the midst of those trials, in the midst of those gale force winds? Do we have the courage to stand? Will we have the courage to stand? Because if you're not in a in a in a storm right now, you yeah. either live it before or after. Yeah. That's what they tell preachers. You know, and since all of us are called to the ministry of reconciliation, I just propose that it might just be you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Not answering the call that God has on your life will not negate you from trials and suffering. Huh. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that was fresh. That was hot off the press. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. <laughs> it will not. You will not. You. <laughs> Okay. Let me pause and put this. I got a little bit. Y'all remember the comedian Sinbad? Yeah. It, this was years ago. Uh -huh. He was real popular. I don't know what he doing right now. Yeah. He was still right around. Uh huh. As a comedian, excuse me. But he did this comedic act. He was talking about his mama uh -huh. and um. His mama with the rubber hand. And, uh, oh, well, I'm a little seasoned. So, <laughs> oh, some of y'all time. Amen. But anyway, he does this comedic act. And he had disobeyed his mother. Yeah. It's perfect. He had disobeyed his mother by going somewhere in the neighborhood that he shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. And when his mother found, she came looking for him, calling his name. Melba. <laughs> You don't mind if I use you too. Mark! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Charlotte! LaRonda! Where you at? He running. <laughs> running from his mother. Right, right. And he says, this is a joke, my mama snatched me back with her rubber hand yeah. from 10 blocks away. Yeah, don't you right. run <laughs> from me. Yeah. <laughs> I just think. We should keep sin bad in mind when we try to run from God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is hard. It gets hard to kick against the prayer. Yeah. Amen. Thank y'all for indulging me. <laughs> hey, don't you run. Don't you run. Okay. So while they were temporary, I don't know if I read this or not. While they were temporarily behind Carter, three distinct, no, I didn't. Three distinct operations were performed. First, with difficulty, first, with difficulty, they hauled in the small ship that they, that, uh, like other ancient ships, they towed on a line behind them. Second, they took ropes and undergirded the ship to strengthen it against the waves. Third, and most importantly, they trimmed the sail, secure, secure the ship. Right. And that's wasn't one of my original points. That one is free. Secure the ship. How do we secure the ship? We secure the ship, as Elder LaRonda said when she was up doing the exaltation, getting, putting our face in God's faces, face. Getting in his word, that's getting in his face because he is his word. Um, spending time in prayer and worship, um, singing songs, and that's how we secure the ship. Amen? But back to my story. Each of these actions are steps that would have taken, that would have taken, these were the steps that they took to secure the ancient ship. Right. Here's my second point. Set your anchors. Uh -oh. Set your anchors. There, there are several types of anchors, and this wasn't in this part of the story, but I just thought it was a good point to me. 
There are several types of anchors that are used aboard ships at sea. A sea anchor is used to slow the ship down in a storm. It keeps the ship stable. Right. We're securing the ship, y'all. Right. Find the scripture that applies to whatever it is you're going through. Amen. And then apply God's word to your situation. Amen. Amen. It, it'll slow you down long enough to catch your breath. Some storms you have to ride out. You can't avoid them and you can't get away from them, but you need to stay steady. Now I'm going to pause right here and ask y'all to pray for me because I'm lightheaded and the devil is a liar. Amen. 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 So I'm going to leave. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made, made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, yes. I like that way, God will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yes. The peace of God. Peace of God. Then there are the bow anchors. There's usually four of them that anchor to the rocks and hold the ship securely. Uh -huh. Point three. God is our rock. Amen. We who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. Right. This hope you have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. What's, what's my anchor? Mm. I'm securing my ship and I'm setting my anchors. Philippians told us to be anxious for nothing. Yes. Nothing. There's nothing. Amen. Just like there's nothing on the backside of all in all you're gonna get an understanding. Mm -hmm. There's nothing nothing on the backside of nothing. It's, it's nothing there. So there is no reason for us to be anxious or or fearful hearted or not just taking God at his word. Right. Amen. Amen. Discouragement point four. Discouragement is a choice. You can choose to be belly aching, mm. or you can choose to give God praise in the midst of your storm. Right. 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 It's a choice. Right. Many of us, because, and I, I found this, I was doing some soul searching on, on last week, and I was thinking about some things like, why do I react to, and I'm not going to get into all of the details, um, why do I react to certain situations in certain ways? And I, the Lord showed me this. It's because that is what I learned. Children live what they learn. So yeah. while I'm trying to figure out, well, why do I behave this way? Why do I behave that way? And I don't get it twisted. This is not an excuse to keep doing what you know you shouldn't be doing. Right. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, but God showed me it was because... It was a reaction that I had learned in my childhood. Yeah. Now, if we want to break some generational curses, there are some things that we just don't have to let go. Right. Yeah. Right. Just because mom did it or the, she was the matriarch of the family, that doesn't mean she was correct in what she was doing or he was doing. Right. Or whoever it is, we right. put up on a pedestal and called them our idol. Right. Amen. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Discouragement is a choice. Mm -hmm. it, Lord. Sometimes we may be walking in the will of God and not seeing the desired re result. Mm -hmm. Don't go by what you see. Right. Don't get discouraged. Keep your faith. Romans 8 and 28. But everything that we go through, there is a scripture that can be applied to that situation. Amen. Amen. And, and we gain so much. We may not know what it is, but we got Google, mm -hmm. Google right. Earth, <laughs> and whatever other search engine, I like Google, you want to use. All you got to do is just type a little bit of it in the, in the search engine, and you can find what applies. A scripture that applies to brokenness. A scripture that applies to fear. Whatever the case may be, find it. And you learn, you glean so much more in the process of searching out God's word. Amen. That's securing your anchor. Amen. Securing your ship. Amen? Amen. Point five. Trust God to see you through. 
Acts 27 and 25. Let me flip that. I may want to read a little bit from the word. Just so y'all don't think I'm making this stuff up. So take courage, men. Let me back it up a little bit. I'm going to start at 23. No, I'm going to start at 21. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, you men should have followed my advice. You know, we got to get that. I told you so. Man. <laughs> he was no different from some of us. I told you to go right, not left. See what you get? Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> because the ship had under, he had, he had advised against them taking a certain route. Let me, you know, narrow it down a little bit. He had advised them against taking a different route because he knew that, that you know, the ship was going to tow up. And it was. Yeah. And so he came back in verse 21 um, and he told them, he was getting ready to share with them what the Lord had revealed to them. That, you know, even though the ship was lost, hear me, even though your ship may be lost, <laughs> you're not. Amen. 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 You're not. Amen. You depended on that job. That ship may be lost. That was, I may as well share. That was my uh, part of, only part of, because it was like a full day of, I was like, oh my God, when is going to stop? Um, part of what I was encountering on, on last week, and I needed to make some decisions to stay where I, I, stay where I am. Or to move to somewhere else. Now I've been offered another position somewhere else. Position just isn't ready yet. And then I've been offered a position somewhere else that is ready. Mm -hmm. But I know God put me where I am. Right. Because I made a decision a, a while back to not take a job that wasn't workplace ministry. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. Um, workplace ministry. Right. Come on, right. 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 Amen. 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 It's not about the money. I could make a lot more money somewhere else. I work for a nonprofit. But that's where God placed me right. for this season. Yeah. So until God says otherwise, my ship may be lost. That position. Oh, what? I'm not. Hey, hey, go ahead now. I'm not lost. Right, Amen. The situation is. Grounded. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Grounded. Hey. Amen. Mm hmm. So, because they had went like 14 days, you know, battling this storm, and they had not eaten, um, Paul told, tells them, you know, get something to eat. After he <laughs> did the, I told you so. You should have followed my advice not to sail from Crete and sustain this damage and loss. Now I urge you to take courage, because there will be no loss of any of your lives, but only of the ship. For last night, an angel of God, I belong to, the angel of God, the God that I belong to. I said, you, would, you might run into trouble. What God do we belong to? Who are we listening to? In other words, who are we listening to? I belong, the angel of the God I belong to and serve stood by me and said, don't be afraid, Paul. It is necessary for you to appear before Caesar. Mm. He had to get to where he was going. Right. By any means necessary. Right. Malcolm X fans. <laughs> it, he had to get to where he was going. And God said that. Yes. We don't get to pick how God chooses to get us to the appointed place at the appointed time. Right. We don't get to pick. But we will be the better served, and I think I said this, if we just go along with the flow, because it's hard to kick against the prayer. Yes. Okay, God, this is uncomfortable. Just be honest. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Raw before God. He already knows, biting your tongue not to say anything so you can appear to be so... Please don't pass it. Make sure you got my back. So you're going to appear to be so self-righteous before God like you ain't never gone through nothing in your little old life. Well, I go through stuff. Amen. I go through stuff. And I know, y'all, we all go through stuff. But holding it in a lot of times does not serve us. You come up with ulcers and whatever the case may be causing sickness in your body just because you won't yield to honesty. My God. 
<laughs> be honest with yourself first. God already know. Just be honest, God. And I was, God. I don't like this place. I mean, I am angry. It's okay. I wasn't this. He already knew I was angry, but I in the, in I acknowledge that you are God, even though I'm angry. But I'm asking you to help me in this place that I'm in because I can't do this by myself. God has graciously given you all, given you all, those who are sailing with you. So it wasn't just Paul. So now here we can put a pin in that. What about those that are attached to us? That are assigned to us? If we forfeit the game, what about them? Coming behind us. It may not be your natural children. But they could be your spiritual children. What if Pastor Jackson forfeited the game? Right. Come on now. Ooh. God said he gives shepherds after his own heart. Right. Yes. You may not be a pastor, but you are definitely called as a minister of reconciliation. You got a mouth. You can use it to tell somebody that there's a God that loves them. Amen. And that their sins can be forgiven. Amen? Amen. Amen. What about them? It's not just about us. And we need to quit making just about us. Woe is me. Oh, my polar low self. What about your polar low self? Amen. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I told you all a while ago that I was quiet. And I am. Believe that. Oh, glory to God. Verse 25. So take courage, man, because I believe God that it will be just the way it was told to me. Just the way he said it in his word. Yeah. That's the way it's going to be. Yeah. Not how you think you write in history. Yeah. But it's going to be just the way he said it was going to be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Just the way he said it. Just the way he said it. Mm-hmm. Now here goes the best slide. Verse 26. But we have to want a ground on some island. <laughs> it's going to be just the way God said it was going to be. But first, we got to wreck this ship. Come on. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. Right, right. We got to run the ground. On some island. He, he, this person didn't even name the island. On a certain island. They said some island. It didn't matter what island. It didn't matter what island. I'm almost done. <laughs> we said on Bible study Wednesday that faith is not feel feelings are not faith. Faith is not feeling. Faith is not feelings are not faith. Thank you. I'm like, I know I'm in the Bible, God. Somebody talks about that. She she got you. <laughs> I have here faith that cannot be tested is faith that cannot be trusted. Say that one more time. Faith that cannot be tested <laughs> is faith that cannot be trusted. Right? You you don't even know for yourself. I believe would help my unbelief. That's faith being tested so it can be trusted. God proves himself to us. We all have the measure of a, you know, a faith, the measure of a mustard seed, but he increases that mustard seed by the things that we go through and he proves himself in to us. Amen. 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 I'm not going to get through it all in this. (sighs) 
I'm going to jump down to 38, verse 38. When they had eaten enough, when they had eaten enough, mm. when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship from casting all of my cares because I'm ready to burn enough. So I'm, I've eaten enough. Mm -hmm. I'm casting all of my cares upon him for he careth is continuous for me. Amen. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship yes. by throwing the grain overboard onto this into the sea. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the grain was was of no consequence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The grain was of no consequence when it came to them being at the appointed place at the appointed time. Mm -hmm. Now they could they could choose to either hold on to that grain or whatever else was on the ship, or they could throw it overboard so they could lighten the load and they could get to where they were going. Amen? Amen. When daylight came, 30, 39, when daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but sighted a bay with the beach. They planned to run the ship ashore if they could. That's a ground. Um, after cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea. At the same time, loosening the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the foresail to the wind and headed for the beach. But they struck a sandbar and ran the ship aground. The bow jammed fast and remained immovable while the stern began to break up by the pounding of the waves. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners. Oh yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. I wanted to make a point about this. The soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners so that no one could swim away and escape. But the centurion, apparently was Paul's homie, um, kept them from carrying out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. Now, how many times has the enemy desired to sift you like wheat? Mm -hmm. um, but I have prayed for you. Mm -hmm. How many times has the enemy desired to kill you mm -hmm. so you don't get away? Mm -hmm. No, right. better yet, so you don't fulfill the purpose and the destiny that God has on your life. Yes. And somebody <laughs> made sure you were spared. Yes. We used to say this in my old church. When my heart is right before God, he is obligated to bring me into the presence of the person or the thing that is key to my success. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was that centurion, right. the person that was key to Paul's success. Because remember, the Lord has said he had to get the room. Yes. All of them did. Amen? Amen. <laughs> he kept them, 40, 43. The centurion kept them from carrying out their plan because he wanted to save Paul. And so he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to follow some on planks and some on debris from the ship. In this way, everyone reached the shore. Everybody couldn't swim. I'm not a strong swimmer. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not just talking about me. Mm. So I just believe <laughs> that while my ship may be destroyed, and God knows I'm, I'm not a, a strong swimmer, he let a piece of that ship, <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit, he let a piece of that ship be a, a plank, mm -hmm. some part of that ship, right. something that I could make it on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Amen. here's my plank. Thank you. Here's my plank. While they are dissolving my current position on my job, eventually, I don't know when. I didn't worry about when. Thanks be to the Lord. Amen. While they are dissolving that position, because I have another skill set, they're going to create one for me. That's my immediate supervisor. I say, look, I'm not currently not in a position to be without my job. Right. I have things to take care of. And she said, oh no. We'll just move you into something else. You, We don't know a lot of times. I would, now, mind you, initially upon receiving that news, I was very distraught. Mm -hmm. 
I was. I'm just being honest. Amen. I was 38 hot. I don't even know if they say that anymore. <laughs> sure they do. You're <laughs> slap. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, and I waited. I had, you know, I was let a whole day go by, didn't say anything. I just, you know, I was upset, but I was quiet for the most part. And um, I was securing my ship. Sure. <laughs> sometimes you have to keep our mouth closed. That wasn't one of my points. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we just need to keep our mouths closed. Amen. If you're not going to praise or pray, and you think some other foolishness might fly out of your mouth? Yeah. Keep it closed. Amen? Amen. Keep it closed. So, some made it on by swimming. They were strong swimmers. Some made it on the broken pieces of the ship. Some made it on the broken pieces of the ship. Mm -hmm. Right. You know how they say, in my little sanctified mind, I believe, or I can surmise, that those that made it on the broken pieces of the ship had not, they weren't strong swimmers. Not all of us are as sound in the word as others. Some of us are, like, you know, they say we're scholars of the word. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't profess to be a scholar. I know what I know. But I'm going to find me a scripture. If you're on a plank mm -hmm. and you know you're not a strong swimmer, then find somebody that is. Mm -hmm. An accountability partner. This was not in my notes. Mm -hmm. An accountability partner. Somebody that you can confide in. If you if you need a, somebody physical, aside from just, it's great to be able to talk to the Lord, go to God in prayer. Sometimes we just want to talk to somebody else. Right. Yes. But only somebody that's sound in the word. Right. That's not going to give us no foolishness, right. but it's going to give us the word. Right. Because they're a strong swimmer. Right. And we need that plank. They could be that plank. Hey, don't forget, this is what the word says about your situation. Apply the word. This is the message was supposed to be encouraging. Jesus. We may be broken. The ship may be broken in pieces. Mm. <laughs> I'm, you're still here. Amen. Amen. And just so we can be encouraged on the fact that we can make it on broken pieces. And even if we're broken, and let me just say this, we don't have to stay broken. Yes. Because if you read you read the, the story, you know, on into uh, chapter 28, it talks about <clears throat> people getting saved mm -hmm. on that island. Because Paul was able to minister to them because he was a strong swimmer. Let's just say for the sake of the point I'm making. He was a strong swimmer. So when he reached down to help make that fire and put wood on the fire and the viper bit him, he shook it off. And they were like, oh no. I don't know how they came up with this. He must be a murderer. You know, the Bible bit him and he must be a murderer. I'm like, okay. I guess that was that eye for the eye. Anyway. <laughs> but that in and of itself was a testimony. That was a testimony for, for the people on the island. So they were like, okay, well, we're going to wait for him to die. He didn't die. Somebody waiting for you because your ship wrecked. Somebody waiting for you to die. But the Lord says, I have not seen, ear has not heard, and neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has conceived for you, for me. They may be waiting for you to die like you. But because he didn't die, because you didn't die, it was meant to kill you, but it didn't. Yeah. Somebody prayed for you. Yeah. Um, they went and got some more yeah. on the island and brought them to Paul so they could be healed. Tell the whole story. Tell the whole story. Yeah. Tell the whole story. Yeah. Tell the whole story. Yeah. Tell the story. Yeah. I'm just to encourage you before I take my seat. Abraham was old. Elijah was suicidal. Mm -hmm. Joseph was abused. Right. Job went bankrupt. 
Moses had a speech problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. The Samaritan woman was divorced. Noah was a drunk. Jeremiah was young. Jacob was a cheater. David a murderer. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Peter denied Christ three times. Martha worried about everything. Zacchaeus was small and money hungry. The disciples fell asleep while praying. And Paul, a Pharisee who persecuted Christians before coming one. So where, where, do you, where do we stand in our brokenness? Where do we stand? It's because it doesn't mean we can't be used. That's right. Amen. And we don't need to make excuses. Amen. 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 For allowing God to have his way in the life that we live. Because of him is his breath that we breathe. Yeah. We don't we don't have any cause to make excuses for why we can't do something. Right. We pick ourselves up by the bootstraps, dust them off, and keep on going. That's what we have to do. That's what they did in these two chapters. Paul was like, I told you, but since you didn't listen, God got a God got something for us. The ship gonna be lost. You're gonna lose some. We might lose some stuff. We might lose some friends or some things that we hold dear to us. They don't matter anyway. Let them go. And there were so many points in this. I just picked out a few. Let the stuff go. Is it? Does it have any relevance to where I'm gonna spend eternity? Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> they missed it. That's frozen. <laughs> Amen. Let it go. It's not in the grand scheme of things on broken pieces or broken. We can make it, y'all.
so that the people can come and get prayed for. Prayer warriors, come up. Thanks. Hallelujah. We're going to do this a little different today. Prayer warriors, come up. Hallelujah. Thank you. Pastor, amen. I see a sea of brokenness. Hallelujah. I see a sea of brokenness. Yes. We are moved with compassion because that's what God was moved. He was moved when he saw the people who were broken before him. Yes. Yeah. Can you get the oil, please? Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you guys to come up. We're going to anoint our hands with oil and we're coming to you. Amen? Because this is the time where we can't be timid to do what God tells us to do. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to do what God tells us to do. We're coming to you. We're not afraid to come to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer warriors, let's go out. Yeah. Okay. 